the fifth generation wireless data or 5G evolution is here. The new wireless technology with faster, broader and more reliable coverage promises to unlock new technological capabilities. One exciting technology that benefits from 5G is the self-driving car. Cellcom Axiata Brehat unveiled its first autonomous car on Thursday, a driverless Proton Exora, which is a collaboration with eMovit Technologies and Dram Brehat and Ericsson. You've heard it, and you've seen it, and everyone has been talking about it. But really, what is a driverless car, and how does it work? And I believe I'm not the only one who's curious about it. That is why I'm here at the Putrajaya 5G Showcase and Exhibition to find out more. So autonomous car is pretty much all about the car itself, whereby the control systems, the sensors work in, uh, in tandem. But for it to be uh, a driverless or driven by in remotely, you need basically a, a network as 5G where the latency is extremely low. The data that's coming out from the car are actually quite extensive. It needs to be uploaded very, very quickly. Only 5G offers those kind of capabilities. On latency, uh, the capability of 5G is, uh, is up to one millisecond. The data transmission between the car and the cloud is almost real-time. Dr. Hari Zamzuri from eMovit, which is a high-tech startup specialised in the development of the driverless system said the car uses six cameras, three radar, three lidar and artificial intelligence to travel. Artificial intelligence will, will classify, differentiate between the pedestrians, the vehicles, lorry and bus. Okay, the LiDAR is actually a 3D mapping. It's the 3D uh, laser scanning. So it will map all the surroundings, including the, the, the buildings. From that, he will uh, recognize the, the locations of the vehicles. Uh, why we fuse it three sensors is because it's to make sure that the object what I detect is the crack. So let's say that the sensors is detecting a different is recognize different things. Yeah. So we cannot do that. We, because of the safety level, so we need to fuse all three LIDAR, three sensors. So from that, the, the vehicle will try to follow the routes that, that we, we determine first. Let's say that there is a pedestrian. So he knows already there will be a pedestrian at the right hand side, for example. From that, the vehicle will make a decision whether they want to stop or moving forward. After understanding how it works externally, we also went for a ride in a driverless car. Uh, what we have here is uh, actually a system for autonomous vehicle. So um, this is safety officers. Task is to make sure that the system is working perfectly, and then if anything happen, he will he will react. Now um, we have a button here, a red color. This one is uh, for emergency button. And then we have some interface here whereby we can see uh, a lot of uh, some uh, 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 routes for navigations. Dr. Harry said the self-driving system aims to introduce the country's on-demand short-distance shuttle service in areas like Putrajaya, just like Grab, except it will eliminate human errors. He also said although it is possible for the car to be ready for the consumer market in the future, but Malaysia currently does not have a policy on autonomous vehicle. The bottleneck is not on the technology side right now, but it's more on policy and regulations. Some travel all the way from Ipoh just to get a ride in a car to see what holds in the future. Uh, to me, I think this is new experience, excited. Uh, hopefully it can be implemented in our country soon. Uh, I'm sitting there and feel very creepy because the steering is uh, not being controlled by anyone. I think it's going to make me less tired, tired, tired dealing with all the traffic since uh, the traffic is uh, the most troublesome thing for all the drivers. Bila kita perlu ke hospital atau perlu ke rumah, ke mana-mana tempat rumah ibadat, kita boleh guna kereta tanpa memandu lah. Sebab mata pun dah tak terang, badan pun dah tak kuat. Yeah. 
being a car driver myself means usually I'm the one behind the wheel and taking control of the car. Now riding in a driverless car was at first a little frightening because the safety officer's hands weren't really on the wheel. But because of the speed that we were going at, it was less than 15 km per hour, I eventually enjoyed the feeling of being chauffeured around. And there you go, I've learned a thing or two about a driverless car and I hope you do too. This is Tina Law for Star TV.